Hey guys, this is Isabel from the Cognito Forms team. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Auto Create Entries feature, which is available to users on the team and enterprise plans. With Auto Create Entries, you can automatically create entries in other forms based on actions taken in your current form. First, you'll need a source form and a target form. The source form is where the workflow starts and where your data originates. The target form is where you want the new entry to go. To transfer data from the source form to the target form, you'll connect them using either a person field or a lookup field. Since the target form is where your data will end up, you'll need to include the person field or lookup field there. To demonstrate, I'm going to use an employee list as my source form. When I hit the Create Employee button on this form, a new entry will be created on a Code of Conduct Agreement form. You can actually create entries on multiple forms, but we'll get to that later. The first step is to connect the target form to the source form. To do this, I'll go to the target form and add either a person field or a lookup field. In this case, we have a code of conduct form that the new employee needs to sign, so it makes sense to add a person field to represent the new employee that will be created when I click the Create Employee button on the source form. Since my employee list is the only form in my organization that uses a person field, this form will automatically look up people from that form since it's the only option available. In this scenario, I only need to pre-fill one field on the code of conduct form, but if you wanted to pre-fill more than one field, there's no need to add additional lookup fields to do that. Since the two forms are already connected with this person field, you can just add whatever field type you'd like to pre-fill and then pull in your data using a simple calculation. For example, let's say I wanted to add an email field to this form and pre-fill it with the information entered on the employee list. I'd first add that email field and then go to the default value field in the field settings. I would enter an equal sign followed by the name of the person field or lookup field you already used on the form. In this case, the name of the person field is employee. Then if I enter a period, I can access all the fields on my source form, including the employee's work email. I highly recommend setting up your forms this way, as it helps avoid adding extra lookup fields. This is preferable because having too many lookup fields can slow down your form. One caveat to be aware of is that you cannot do this with signature fields or file upload fields, for security purposes. Additionally, if you'd like to pull in data from repeating sections or tables, you'll need to add a calculation field to your form and pull in your data using the following syntax. If you'd like more information on looking up data from repeating sections or tables, I've included a link to more detailed instructions in the description below. Now, depending on our use case, we may want to edit our actions and statuses. In this case, I'm going to change the submitted status to Assigned to Employee. I'll also add a new status, which I'll call Signed by Employee. Next, I'll relabel the Submit action to Assigned to Employee, ensure it's only visible at the appropriate time, and set it to update the entry to the correct status. I'll do the same for the Update action, this time relabeling it to Sign Agreement. At this point, the target form is successfully set up, so I can save it. If you used a person field, you'll be prompted to choose whether you want to require authentication. I don't need to require authentication since this field will be pre-filled, so I'm going to hit Dismiss. Then I'll return to the workflow section of my source form and open the submit action. To make it clear that this action creates new entries on other forms, I'll rename it to create employee. Then I'll click on the add entry button under create entries. In the dialog box that appears, you'll be prompted to choose the target form. All the forms listed here are connected to this source form using either a person field or a lookup field. After selecting your target form, you'll need to choose how you'd like the entry submitted. In other words, if you were manually creating the entry on the target form, which action button would you use to submit it? Then you'll choose which fields you'd like to pre-fill. In this case, there's only one field we can pre-fill on the target form, so I'll choose that. 
If there were other options, we could add those as well. From the next drop-down menu, you'll typically choose the option labeled This Entry, but there may be other options if you used a person field, such as the ones you see here. When you're finished making your selections, you'll hit the Save button on the dialog box and then save your form. At this point, we could create another entry on another form, but let's take a look and see this one in action. When we open the source form, fill it out, and click the Create Employee button, we'll see that a new entry is successfully created on our Code of Conduct form. If you'd like to assign these entries as tasks, you can easily do that by going to the Build page and assigning the public role to the employee. Then you can add a new grid view on the Entries page, assign the entries as tasks, and filter by the appropriate status. This setup allows us not only to create new entries on other forms with a single action, but also to assign tasks on other forms with a single action. That's all we're going to cover in this video, but if you'd like to learn more about auto-create entries, you can check out our user guides linked in the description below, or you can reach out to our team directly by submitting a support request.